It's time to pick a side. The border war is on the air with BG and Ten. All right, gang, welcome into episode 107 of The Border War. I'm the Tan Man. I'm here with BG. You can follow us on Twitter at TanMan3264. I know that aggravates the bejesus out of my man next to me. At BG underscore Border War and at The Border War. We're also on Facebook. You can like and share our page on Facebook there as well. In this episode, we're going to be talking some round ball, some bat. What do they call the baseball? Hard ball. Isn't that, isn't that a movie? Hard, We're going to be talking baseball. Hardball. Hard, yeah, hardball. With G-Baby and Keanu Reeves. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That'll hit you to the heart, man. When G-Baby dies, man, that, that, that will get you. Why are you trying to get me all choked up I'm just right telling when you, my man. segment starts? Yeah, anyway, we're going to be talking some baseball. Big money has been floated out all around the league. I don't even well, know if big money is the right word for it anymore. Maybe not all around the league. There's some guys that have gotten some big money. Uh, the Atlanta Braves, their season starts this weekend. Where there have has not been any big money spent. No big money yet. Uh, mm. So we're going to be talking about some Atlanta Braves baseball. But before we get started, BG is going to catch us up on all the happenings on the college diamond. Yeah, uh, really, uh, of our three teams uh, in our box, we're going to start up in Chapel Hill with the preseason ranked number two North Carolina Tar Heels. Obviously, they got swept by Clemson. You ain't got to um, bring that back up. Man. Well, I'm just saying it explains partially like we were talking about before the show. They're 18-7 and seven overall, um, only 4-5 and five in the conference, but basically they've gone 4-2 and two, Right. Um, since that. They won the, won the two series, I guess. I guess yeah, they, they won the they, two series they, that they played uh, in the conference. They took two then. out of three versus Miami uh, to follow up that week with Clemson. Um, and then they took two out of three uh, at Virginia Tech. Um, a powerhouse. Neither, neither one of those teams ranked. Um, and right on schedule, uh, after a Tuesday game versus the Campbell Camels up in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, good friend of mine's dad, uh, actually the guy who suggested that we get back in our box. His dad was the head baseball coach. Really? At uh, Campbell University. John Darty, back in the day, was also at Wofford. And he was at USCS back in the day when it was the USCS Rifles. Running, was it? The, the running, running Rifles? Well, I think the Running Rifles just played basketball. Everybody else was just the regular, ah. regular Rifles. They're just the plain Rifles. <laughs> the, I, um, lo- I love Campbell. I love that mascot for some reason because it's different. It the is Camels. definitely different. Um, and right after that, this weekend, it's the Duke Blue Devils coming to Chapel Hill Good. for a baseball series that no one will care about, which is sad. Um, <laughs> all right, so... Uh, Clemson, uh, of the three uh, college baseball teams in our box, by far doing the best. They're 6-3 and three in the ACC. But, again, playing 500 ball in the ACC since sweeping the Tar Heels uh-huh. two weekends ago, 18-6 and six overall. Um, they are nationally ranked. But I don't have it right in front of me. Um, since losing that series to South Carolina, they basically played really good baseball. They did lose a series to Notre Dame. Um, Notre Dame's a very, very good baseball team, right. and they were probably just excited to be playing in the South uh, because I can only imagine what things are like in just Indiana happy to get out of the snow. in the middle of February when they were playing. Um, took one versus the College of Charleston and then won two out of three versus Boston College. This past weekend they take on uh, the Charlotte 49ers tomorrow night on Tuesday and then a series at home with the Hokies of Virginia Tech coming up. And then the weekend after that, they get – this is going to be really interesting. Uh, a really uh, interesting game with Georgia who uh, – and, and it'll be weird because it'll be a midweek game. I'll be mm. curious to see who those teams throw out. But Georgia's got three guys on their starting rotation right now that are going to be first five-round pick NFL – I mean uh, MLB talent. That, so that'll be an interesting matchup. That Charlotte game, uh, is, it at the, uh, is it at the Knights Park? Where me and you are going to try and go in a couple weeks. Uh, we're we're not gonna, trying to we're watch. Not, and we don't find some starting pitching. BG's not going anywhere near Why? that game because you you've won that game. What's the combined score of the last three years? Seventy one to six. I don't know. It seems like every year it's like fifteen to two. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't want any part of that. I, I, I know. Maybe. What what day is the game? Pull, you got. All right. Well, I've got South Carolina yeah, schedule. We'll look guys. in a minute. We'll look in a minute. We're sixteen and eight overall. Only one in five in the conference. Um, I caramba. Yeah, uh, swept um, 
swept by Georgia two weekends ago. Like I said, um, two of the games very close, seven to eight, two to four. Yeah. Um, I always put our score first even when we lose. Um, so those were competitive games. Uh, then lose two out of three to Tennessee this weekend. Lost the first game 15 to five. But after that, three to two, three to six. Both of those games were games we were leading going into the eighth inning. There is no bullpen in Columbia right now. Starting pitching has been devastated. We lost two starting pitchers to, to arm injuries before yeah. the season started. Then Malinsky goes down first series uh, or first weekend of the of the season. Um, they're trotting guys out there right now who were not intended to has be Tennessee, starting pitchers. Has Tennessee cooled down any? Because they're for a while to start the season. They were red hot, man. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. They they Look. I don't want to make excuses. Our defense has really been what's disappointed me. Yeah. Uh, when you're starting inexperienced starting pitchers, you need good defense from your upperclassmen, right. especially up the middle. Uh, we're not getting that right now. Now, the offensive bats have been great. We've continued to just smack the baseball, but um, not enough. And uh, it seems to have come at the expense of, uh, I-, I told you at the beginning of the season like that, that Kingston's quote was, we lost – Everybody, mm-hmm. this is a new team, young, young team. Um, I will remind everybody, though, that the team last year that went to a super regional um, started out the SEC one and five. Okay, and it's the exact same thing. So, coming up a Tuesday night game with A and T up in uh, well, it's in Columbia, but uh, versus North Carolina A and T, the Aggies coming down there, and then it doesn't get any easier, man. Uh, Fifteen rank, fifteenth ranked Auburn comes to town. Followed the weekend after that by a Tuesday night matchup in Charlotte with the Wolf Pack of North mean? Carolina State. Let me just scroll down and find that North Carolina game. It is in Charlotte. Uh, so that's not a couple. Um, that's not for a couple more weeks. And it, I is thought it was on usually, a, and it is on a Tuesday night, which I, I nothing was, about that sounds great to me. I thought it was usually that that first week of April we played. I it's, guess we, well, it seems like we substituted that with Ray's old team in the Wolf Pack, and we have moved you guys on down. Hopefully some NCAA violations happen before right, then listen, and you're not no, able to no, field listen, the team. Quit, quit running because all that means is by the time you play us, I see a, a series with Auburn, a series with Alabama, a series with Florida on there. By the time y'all get to us, y'all may not even have a baseball team left. It'll just be a shell of your former selves. Uh, the, it, this is a South Carolina team that kind of like we were talking about uh, in the last show, um, sort of like what you were talking about with uh, Virginia and that, that – First game of the tournament this year when they were down at halftime, they said if you had been Jay Wright, you'd have just said, "Look, man, y'all are on your own. You, you, you do what do what you do." All right. Well, South Carolina's pitching is in that situation. They're just going to get left out there until they grow up. Right. There so is no left. one left. It's sometimes when you, you know how kids, limited college it's... baseball rosters are. Yeah. And when you start getting hit with the injury bug, and and I will say this because part of me starts to get angry about this because we just had a football season like this, right? Where South Carolina, every time you watch the broadcast, the broadcasters lead off with saying, these guys have 22 players <laughs> on injured reserve or whatever it was. All right, what was it? There were, there were of the 11 starting defenders from, from the first game of the season, none of them played in the Clemson game. I mean, that, that's how bad it was. But with baseball, especially with pitchers, I think a lot of these injuries start way before they make it to college. you got to oh, watch agree. these travel baseball teams, I man. Some of you. these guys – and those are the caliber of player you're getting at schools like Clemson and North Carolina and South Carolina. But we've just drawn the short straw, and again, not making excuses. They play, because they, yeah, they play year-round, and they throw year-round, and by the time they hit to be 18, 19 years old, their arms are done. Their arms are shot. And, and that seems to be uh, some of what's going on in Columbia. But again, that does not excuse the poor defensive play. Um, our offense seems to be overly aggressive right now. I've seen a lot of like yesterday, I went up to get a, a glass of, of, of Coke. I come back. We're already out in the top of the first. I mean, I think the pitcher threw four pitches. So we're swinging on the first pitch. We're maybe trying to overcompensate a little. Yeah. Thinking, okay, we need to score runs. Let's get on it. Sometimes the best thing you can do, especially in that Georgia series, man, let the guys throw some pitches. Get to the bullpen and find out if they're all Randy Johnson. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we haven't Listen, played smart. Haven't quit, been that smart this year. Quit getting up there and hacking. Quit getting up there and just swinging at anything. Well, but it makes me wonder if they're being coached to do it. It's just, you know, look, it, it's a long season. I don't expect South Carolina to continue to struggle to this degree, 
Um, but right now, you know, they're fifth in the SEC East. Um, a long way to go, but it hasn't been a good start. Yeah, they'll be twelfth by April sixteenth. Anyway. There's, there's only six teams, but you or seven teams. You 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 keep going. They actually use the divisions in baseball. Good job. I don't though, care. Man. I don't care. They're going to be twelfth in the SEC. All right, Atlanta Braves. They use divisions in baseball. They do indeed. When you look at the standings on the SEC, I just like they I, have them I, broken in the divisions. I didn't think they used them for anything but football. They, well, it doesn't really – they play everybody, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But maybe there's no, something – There's no way they play everybody. Well, what yeah. I'm saying is they play way more West teams than they do in football. It's not just the one team and the rotating thing. Yeah. They play – I mean, like we're, we're playing a good – we're playing Alabama. We're playing A&M. Right. We're playing Auburn. I mean, you're playing a large majority of the teams right. from the West, too. I have to do some research on that. I, I think you're wrong. Uh, listen, let's talk about uh, some Major League Baseball now for a few minutes, BG. You know, all you've heard from the Players Association is how you know, these middle, you know, these middle guys in the middle of their career, they're getting squeezed out in free agency. We saw it last year. A handful of guys, Jake Arrieta is one. Uh, they go all the way up until like into spring training and, and halfway through spring training before they start getting deals. Uh, this summer, this uh, off season, if you don't get that goddamn computer out of my face, I'm going to throw it against the wall. It's not mine. I don't care. You're going to have to answer for it. Nah. Uh-huh. Nah. Uh, the complaint uh, among the baseball players were how the money was not getting spent. The owners were holding on to it. They're giving you know, The younger guys, they're getting – Less money, and the guys who are who have put the years in, they're not kind of getting that payday in the middle of their careers. Um, it's hard to argue that right now because when you look around at the spending spree that's going on, you got this Manny Machado. Is it all TV money? Huh? Is it all TV money? I, I don't I, understand. I, I, I don't, I don't think so. We've about this in the NBA because – I don't think so because the, in baseball, the teams do their own TV deals. There's not a league-wide TV deal. And there is no salary cap. There's no salary cap, but you look – you know, San Diego – you know, kind of a smaller market, not really known for shelling out a lot of money. They go out and pay Manny Machado. The uh, Philadelphia Phillies, of course, they are a bigger market. They do have some money to spend. They go out and get Bryce Harper. But well, somehow, then, the, somehow the Angels are a small market. Well, I don't quite get that. But, but then you go out and you go out west, and the, I still call them Anaheim Angels. The L.A. Angels of Anaheim give Mike Trout. The L.A.A.A. And the L.A.A.A.B.C.D. They give Mike Trout four hundred and thirty million dollars, man. Okay, so here's the thing: was it thirteen years? It's a bunch. It, it, it it's like the rest of his life. Yeah, I think I his it, children actually have to play major league baseball. Yeah, it's, now. it's basically Even a lifetime they, contract. Yeah, he has to have a son now, and that boy has to play for the Angels. He has no choice. Um, mm. it, the thing about that is, and this is going to sound crazy, it's not that much money. Because what's going to happen, right? Because it's such a long deal, five, six years from now, it's going to be middle lane kind of money. It's a lot now. But over that time, that contract ages, right? Mm. Well, it's what you saw happen with uh, with Antonio Brown in Pittsburgh. You know, he comes off of his rookie deal. Okay. I mean, he was in that first class, I think, that had that rookie contract. Okay. And he comes off of that, and he's given a massive raise. And he overperforms that contract, but when you, that's how you end up with guys like that. When you look at them, I mean, let's just use Des Bryant for an example. I don't know what kind of contract he had in Dallas at the height of it, but let's just say you know, when when free agency comes, you're like, how is Des Bryant the 32nd paid wide receiver? Because when he signed the contract, it was second, and that's what happens. I, I I'm gonna disagree. Nobody else is getting 430 million dollars. Well, there's there's one dude in baseball. And you can argue about whether or not he's really worth that. Uh, you know, and, and you want to make a, an argument about the popularity of baseball. Would anybody recognize him if he walked in the mall? I don't think it's going to happen it. next year. It's not going to happen, period. This was it, man. There's one dude to give this money to, and that's it. Okay, do you remember the first deal that everybody said would never happen again? Yes, I do. Mark McGuire, $5 million for five years. Wow. And people said, "My God, what is happening?" Listen, there is cannot, no number. When, when they get when they give Mark McGuire that deal, baseball was still baseball was still it, man. It was still popular. You can't, or to me, you can't argue and go. No, okay, no, I will agree with that. You, you can't, agree you can't, with you can't go. Going. Baseball is falling off. Nobody watches baseball. Blah blah blah. And then say in five more years, there's going to be somebody that gets six hundred million dollars. Well, that's why I let off. 
where is the money coming from? I, that's what I don't understand because, I mean, I know they have 82 home games, uh-huh. okay? And I know that, you know, but the Braves last year, I would say they averaged, I don't know what, 18,000 fans? I mean, they I did no pretty idea. well, yeah. man. They did pretty well. Um, I mean, I just, I, I'm going by old Turner Field days. I remember like 36,000 was a really good weekend night crowd. Man, that was a big stadium, man. That's that stadium big, held like 50 something thousand people. Yeah. Um, I, so, I mean, if it's not ticket sales, I mean, it might be TV money, but all reports say that nobody's watching baseball on TV. Not on TV. And like I said, the teams, they do their own TV deals. They're not getting league-wide TV money like you do in the NBA. And, and of course, and I work the NFL. in a school with kids that are of the age you would want if you're making – I mean, and when I tell you that if I asked every class that I teach, who is Mike Trout? Nobody there knows. There is not man. a single, not one – or if I just said name as many Major League Baseball players as you can name. But when I tell you, if I asked them NBA, they could name, I'd say, ten, eight to ten players. Yeah. Just, uh, and in NFL, I would say they could name seven to eight players. I, I just thought Major it was League Baseball. I no. just thought it was funny how when Bryce Harper got his deal in Philadelphia, he immediately started the – Roundabout recruitment of Mike Trout because he's well, from Jersey. He's a big Philadelphia. What he Eagles said immediately fan. is that they could still bring a title to Washington. I mean, Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and the Angels are like, oh, no, 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 no. And I, I, I kind of wonder whether or not Mike Trout was looking for a way out. And then they shoved this piece of paper across the table and be like, okay, here's your money. They get to his number, and he's just kind of like, well, I guess I kind of got to take it. I guess I kind of have to sign the paper now, but. Well, no, if I there's mean, one dude to give this money to, I wouldn't have given it to Machado. I wouldn't have given it to Bryce Harper. But you look at Mike Trout. He's been in the league, I think I heard it, seven years. And in those seven years, he's won two MVPs, and he's finished in like the top three the and, other five and, times. And he's a guy you want to be the face of your brother. Right. I, man, and Mike Trout is worth every stinking with, penny. With Manny Machado, unless you're going to win a World Series, you wonder if you even want him in your state. Like, yeah. I don't want this guy. Yeah, Bryce does. Harper's not that bad, but Machado's poison. I yeah, mean, oh yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how the har- or how the, the Trout deal goes year by year. I'm sure it's probably not the sweetheart deal that Philadelphia got from Bryce Harper because that salary actually decreases. So as Bryce Harper gets older, he will actually be making less money per year, which is the total opposite of what all those Yankee contracts and Miguel Cabrera contract and A-Rod contract do. So by the end of that deal in Philadelphia, it's not going to look as bad. I don't know what Harper's looks like, but the dude's like 26 or 27, right. man. you got a long way to go sure. before there's any kind of real drop-off of production from that guy. But again, and, and you know, I saw this tweeted out, but we've talked about it in, in, in the NFL especially, and I think it's true in this situation. I don't know that the Angels are signing this guy because their goal is to use him to win a World Series. I just don't think that's what this is about. I I think this is stabilizing, getting good ticket sales, being pretty good, having a face like that famous scene from Moneyball, which, my Lord, you need to watch. I haven't seen it. And he walks up, you know, Billy Bean arrives at the stadium on his first day, and the Giambi banner's falling to the ground because he's been let go. And, and, Mm. you know, know, the Conseco banner's falling to the ground because he's let go, whoever it was. All right, so... You need that guy on the banner. You need somebody. You need somebody. You need somebody to sell as the face of your team, and, and that's, I think, what they wanted. And, and it was clearly – and this wasn't even like a hard thing to get done, apparently. They were basically like, here's a blank check. How much money do you want? Eh, $430 million over 13 years. Done. Okay, done. I right, look at – Nobody – nobody, nobody – the, the, the Phillies aren't going to have this work out. You can't pay one player that kind of money. It's not going to lead to success. Okay, the, the Angels, but I don't think that's their all, goal. All, uh, you know, some of the talking heads, they all say, look, the Angels aren't going to be in the World Series talk or even the playoff talk this year. But they all said, look, they've got a farm system. They've got some kids coming up. And in, in, in a couple years, you know, if guys stay healthy and things play out right, that the Angels could be in that in that situation. So I think, you know, I, I think you're wrong. I think some of this was about making sure that Mike Trout's around 
for when some of these young guys that they they say they have in their organization come around and are ready. I know to they've contribute. completely raised it to the ground. I mean, they, they're they're an organization apparently, their farm organization, much like the Braves. There's your segue. Mm. Um, was just decrepit five six years ago, and they've rebuilt that farm team. And I've heard similar things, but um, I think that's the kind of thing that they hope that happens. Obviously, but. Yeah, that's a lot of money to put in one bag. That's, that's a lot of dude. And if man, I'm going to pay somebody that dude. kind of money, it's probably going to be a pitcher. Because those are the guys in a five-game series that will win it for you in a seven-game series. Pitching is reliable. Hitting over a season, yes. In a, in a playoff series, maybe, maybe not. Man, I said, we'll agree to disagree on that one. I think he's worth every penny. Uh, the Atlanta Braves, a lot of questions about what they were going to do. And so far, it's been what they haven't done. Uh, in free agency a lot of questions we'll start with their pitching rotation all the young arms that they had last year seemed like they had eight or nine guys we talked a couple weeks ago uh, about their uh, about their uh, rotation and we said look they've got several guys who who could be starters well the opening day starter has been announced it is a couple of the guys we talked about i think have been moved on out now and yep uh, the drum roll no surprise back to julio tehran sixth year in a row i think which is a league tying our franchise tying record yeah and uh so So he's up there with smoltz glavin and maddox now with like opening day starts I'm not sure who that was back then, but six, not sure. six is the most the Braves franchise has ever had in a row. Really? For opening day. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Uh, they're going with some young, some of these young guys. They have still not made the move for... Is it crazy to you that Julio Tehran's 28 years old? He feels older than that. 46? 50? He feels... I mean, he, yeah, I mean, it seems like he, he's he feels, been there forever. It seems like he's been around a long, long time. Uh, they've had some guys banged up. Fulton Nevitz is dealing... Uh, with some elbow soreness. He's probably a month or so away. Kevin Galsman, he's had some shoulder soreness. So he is not ready to pitch at the major league level just yet. And so with that said, the Atlanta Braves are, uh, that leaves uh, Tehran and Sean Newcomb as really the only guys who've, uh, you know, who've had some experience. And you know what uh, some of this is, is that the Phillies lineup is heavy, heavy, heavy right-handed. Yeah. So they're going to throw a lefty out there on day day one. And 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 again, if it's not to run, you have to have a reason to not start Julio Toronto on opening day, right? He's he's still I guess your ace. Yeah. I mean, you didn't start him in game 1 against the Dodgers to, you know, start the playoffs, but I, I mean, I think that was a matchup thing too. Um but if it wasn't going to be Toronto, it was going to be Fulton Evans, and he's not ready to yeah, He's not he's ready, not ready, to, ready to pitch. So, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, they, they've got some young guys who are going to crack that rotation the first go-round. Yeah. Uh, Bryce Wilson and Kyle Wright are going to uh, finish out the Philadelphia series to open up with. Both of those guys in the top uh, ten prospects in the franchise. Yeah. So. Uh, Tuki Toussaint is a guy that I thought uh, would have a, ch- uh, have a chance to get one of those rotation spots to start the year off with. Uh, he had a terrible spring, man. He was very bad with spring. They have sent him to uh, AAA to start the year off while they await some of these uh, injuries to come through and see what some of these young guys have. Uh, what's your take on uh, on uh, going with the, the two rookies in the starting rotation for the opening weekend? I, I like it. I, I agree with well, you. Well, here's the thing, man. Especially Kyle Wright. Kyle, Kyle Wright's the number four prospect in this vaunted farm system. Man, We've been hearing about this stuff now for what? We've been hearing about all of these guys Four for seasons. years now. It is time. It's time, man. Put them on the mound. Uh, it's time to pick a pitcher. It is. We're talking about throwing a baseball here. The Atlanta apparently, Braves season is on the way. Apparently, he is good at throwing a baseball to batters. Let's let him do that. All right. And, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? He gets blown up, okay? Well, look. Well, I, I mean – yeah, put put them out there, man. You I didn't I, have anybody else. Yeah, I, I see a, a lot of Braves fans on social media who are railing about how they haven't made a move. You, know, you got all these guys well, out the, there. The Braves fans want Craig Kimbrell back. That's what ninety well, percent of. And I think ultimately that will get done. It needs to. Yeah, I, I, they it say he, they say he's hung up on five years. The Braves don't want to go over three. I think ultimately the Kimbrell deal and, gets done. But I'm talking about Atlanta fans are going. Oh, you know, we haven't gone out. We haven't made a move. We need an ace pitcher. And I got on there the other day, and I said, "Look, man, you got you've been hearing about young arm after young arm. You, you, you know, you can name six guys who are twenty three or younger. Yeah. Uh, who's to say that one of these guys does not turn into 
that ace guy did not does not turn into the horse of a of a John pitching Smoltz, rotation. Tom Ab- Tom Glavin, you got to put him out Steve there, man. Steve Avery, all these guys came up through Greenville, South Carolina, in the farm system. Greg Maddox was the only big time pitcher that went out. I mean, and Denny Nagel, I guess you could make that argument that that was a yeah. big free agent signing, but he was the number four guy in that but, rotation. Yeah, but yeah, you know, when they were when they were in their heyday, though, it was Glavin, Maddox, Smoltz. Yeah, sure. And however else they filled it out was how they filled it out. But no, man, I look. Toussaint struggled in in the in the spring. I think his ERA was you know in the eights or something like that. Uh, send him back down. Let him. Yeah, let him settle himself down. Let some of these guys who did perform well in the spring take their shot, and maybe we're sitting here talking about one of these guys three months from now as being the horse of the, uh, that uh, bolsters and locks down the front end of a pitching rotation. I, don't know, I agree with you. I let, you know, let the young guys throw. Uh, the other move that is kind of catching some uh, catching some eyes around Atlanta Braves camp: uh, super sophomore Ronald Acuna. Let off for most of last season. The numbers were outstanding. Batted 328 with a over 400 on base percentage. They are talking about moving Acuna down to fourth in the lineup. BG. Yeah, batting him clean up, and, and ah. you know, obviously that puts. We're assuming now that because they, it, they they batted this rotation one time. Yeah. I think in this put, lineup that puts Itziarte at lead off. Itziarte at lead off, and and he. I'm going to say I looked it up earlier today, and his on-base percentage last year was 338. And and the only batters that had better on-base percentages were power hitters uh, like Millwood. Not Millwood. God, what am I talking about? Um, Kevin Millwood. <laughs> Kevin Millwood, who I saw pitch in Baltimore and in 2011. And I was standing up <laughs> screaming for Millwood, and people are just looking at me. I'm like, it's from my childhood, man. <laughs> Give me a minute. Uh, you know, you can't put Freddie Freeman at leadoff because he has a really good on-base percentage. So, yeah. um, I think NCRT is the guy that makes the most sense if you're not going to leave with Acuna. I, I don't know. I mean, Acuna, yeah, you know, you'd love, you know, some of the, 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 the infielders to up their batting skills a little bit, you know, lead off um, – with somebody like that, but uh, that's all you've got. So, I mean, Acuna, to me, yeah, I see the idea behind it because you don't want to waste that bat at leading him off and having at least one bat per game when no one can be on base. Uh, um, see, I disagree with you on this one. I think this is I think this is kind of overthinking the room a little bit. Well, no, and I mean, there's certainly yeah. the chance that's true. I'm just sort of playing devil's advocate yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to explain what yeah. I think they think they're doing. Well, I, mean, I, I, I get what, they, you know, what the idea behind it is, but I'm saying – I think you're overthinking things a little bit. You got Acuna when he bat when he bats lead off last year. He's hitting 328. When you dropped him down to second, his batting average dropped almost 100 points. You're talking about dropping him one spot. His batting average drops 90 points. Uh, his on base percentage drops over 100 points. Listen, he wants to hit lead off. That's where he that's where he wants to be. It's where he feels comfortable. And when he's swinging a bat like that, if a player like that tells you, "I feel comfortable in situation A." Then I think you, you know, I think you put him in situation A. I don't think you move him around. See, I, I, think, I, I, think I think you, think, you know, you bring in Josh Donaldson. He's you know, his bat. If his bat comes back around, and he stays healthy. Freddie Freeman. I think you've got some pop in the lineup. If Acuna wants to bat lead off, let him bat lead off. I think years ago, four years ago, I guess when when Dansby Swanson was drafted, I think they had it in their minds that he would be a leadoff hitter. I think so too. I think, and I think that's where a lot of this comes from. Is that they don't, and when they and when they drafted Ronald Acuna, I think they did not have him in their minds as a leadoff hitter, and so they're sort of like, all right, clearly you can't bat Dansby leadoff, mm-hmm. and he he is not. I mean, he needs to, he, he's happy down in that eight hole, um, which is sad, I mean, it is, but I mean he's going to have to up his game some. Um, ideally. If Swanson could become a smarter hitter, uh, hit away, um, you know, slice the ball a little bit more away from his body, and 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 get a higher on base percentage, maybe he could be a leadoff hitter. But I think the problem is, is that Acuna is the only person in the Braves organization who wants him batting there. Hmm. Yeah, I just, I yeah, I think Enciarte he gives you a little bit more versatility if you move him down in the lineup. 
because he's a guy who can get on base and steal some bases uh, a Over little bit. Over a couple seasons, though, his speed's going to become an issue, too. I mean, typically you don't have a – Right, but I'm, I'm talking about for for 2019. Well, yeah, for I think, right now, yeah. I, I, I think you know, I think you lead off. I think you stick in Ciarte somewhere around sixth or seventh. Uh, let Dansby Swanson hit behind him. Well, which is what and, you had last year. And how'd that work out? Pretty well. Pretty well. Pretty well. Don't mess with it, man. Let him let him hit lead off. Uh, that's it for episode 107. We are done. When uh, do the Braves officially start? I think they've got two spring training games, and then I think they start Thursday. Yeah, they open with the Phillies. They start. They don't play the I next wanna, game right away. Though, well, right? see, I don't know if it, I don't know if they play Thursday and Friday, and then take Saturday off and finish up Sunday, or if they I play Thursday they and then skip Friday. I'm not sure. It's it's one of those things where. What am I talking about? I've got it pulled up right here. Uh, they they skip Friday, so they play yeah, Thursday. There was some kind of and weird, then Saturday and Sunday. Weird thing um, there. Yeah, they've got two two spring training games left with the Reds, I think, um, in whatever that place is called. Uh, super cool, super cool super cool place. super cool new field. Uh, um, but the, at Philadelphia and then at home versus the Cubs, man, the first uh, the first couple games, man, there's no rest for the weary. Uh, for Atlanta, because they, you get a series with the Marlins, and then you got heading out to Colorado. So a tough stretch for Atlanta to start the season off. Hopefully, uh, they will continue their success from last season. And uh, they so better if be they want game. us to talk about them. I will quit talking about you in a minute if you stink. Six. Ask the I. podcast. I.e. Charlotte Hornets. The who? Yeah, you Bobcats. heard me. Did you see them last night? A half court heave to beat the Raptors. I love how. Nice. Just real quick, as an aside, like once the fans start screaming, "Let's tank." They won. They start winning. They start as that. They beat Boston and Toronto. Yeah. Hey, all right. Uh, that's it. You can email the show at carolinaborderwar at gmail.com. Tell us what a fantastic job we are doing. Uh, you, you can also go to stadiumscene.tv and check out some other really cool podcasts there. Uh, if you love soccer, that's the place to be. They got like 900 soccer podcasts, uh, but they got a few other things as well. So go check those guys out. Episode 107 is in the books. We are out of here. See you next week. Cook it up custard pie. Cherry pie is better than apple. It's not apple. I don't want to hear about it. Cherry is better than apple. Mm Mm-mm.